once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, Biggie546. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into it. So I think tomorrow the Giants will make their official 53-man roster cut. They have an idea of what they want to do today. Coaches are meeting. Coaches are going over what positions are more important. Who's going to make the back end of the roster. But the most important thing, especially with Joe Judge as our head coach, is going to be once you get to those third, fourth stringers, are they playing special teams or are they not? So I'll start off on offense. Start off with the quarterbacks. Daniel Jones is obviously going to be the starting quarterback. Colt McCoy is the backup guy. We're not going to wish injury on anybody, but if Colt McCoy is in the game, you feel a lot better than about 26 other teams in the league uh, with their backup quarterback. So he's going to be that first guy up and I expect him to fill in nicely if he does have to do that. Hopefully he won't. We don't have Eli who's, who was a superhuman and never got injured. So it's good to have a backup that's that strong. He's really good to have as a backup quarterback. Lastly, with Cooper Rush, he's gonna be the last guy on the roster. He's there because he knows the offense. He's been in the offense, I think, two years now. So any questions the other two quarterbacks have, he'll be able to answer. He'll probably be at least solid if for some reason he had to end up playing. So he knows the offense. And Alex Taney, he was Daniel Jones' favorite guy to kind of study with, study film with. But he's the odd man out. We're not keeping four quarterbacks. And Cooper Rush is vital because he knows the offense and he's a quarterback. Uh, so, you know, he really knows the offense. So he's going to be able to help DJ, help Colt McCoy, or anybody else that would ask him a question. And then Colt McCoy is just so much better than the other two guys. He's a high-end backup in this league. So those two are going to be your two backups. Uh, obviously, Colt McCoy in front of him. But I have the Giants keeping three quarterbacks. With the running backs, we have Saquon, obviously. <laughs> Deion Lewis, Wayne Gallman. And I, I lumped in Elijah Penny as a, as a back. He's going to be our fourth guy. I, I looked last year, the Giants kept three running backs and a fullback. So I think they'll do that again this year. They just signed, I think, Tavin Feaster. I don't think he'll make the roster. When you look across the rest of the roster, I just don't see a spot for Tavin Feaster. I don't I don't see how he can make it. I was a fan of Javon Leak, but they let him go. So at this point, I'm assuming that they're gonna go ahead and keep Saquon, Deion Lewis for your receiving, even though Saquon can catch, but Deion Lewis gives you a new dynamic. And it's gonna be interesting to see who gets uh, the most carries between Wayne Gallman and Deion Lewis. You know, they'll throw him the ball probably a good amount. Maybe you'll see him in the slot. Maybe you'll see Wayne Gallman in the backfield, Saquon in the slot. Uh, you know, maybe you'll see a lot of two back backfields. Uh, we have three good running backs in my opinion. I mean, Saquon is the best, but as far as, I think all three of these guys are starter level or at least stable level running backs who should get a lot of carries and touches. But Saquon is obviously going to get the most amount of touches. Eli Penny is our fullback. He's been there for a little while now, and I expect him to just continue what he's doing, being pretty solid whenever we do line up and put a fullback back there, occasionally catch a swing pass. Other than that, I don't really expect much. Of course, he'll probably be a depth tight end, maybe, just for blocking purposes. But Eli Penny is going to be the fourth guy, and if for some reason, all three of those guys can't play. He'll be the one that gets carried. Moving on to the tight end position. I have us, this is a really difficult decision because we have so many great tight ends. Evan Ingram and Caden Smith have to be your first two receiving options. And then we have Levine Toy Lolo, who's a dominant blocker. So I'm thinking he'll probably be that second tight end. And, you know, maybe in some situations, the two tight end sets will be Toy Lolo and Ingram. I'm thinking sometimes the two tight end sets will be Toy Lolo and Ingram. And then other times it'll be Ingram and Smith. Smith can block. So it gives you a lot of versatility. And if Smith ups his receptions and is a solid blocker, he might just take a lot of snaps away from Toy Lolo because having him and Evan Ingram, two actual threats at the tight end position will be very helpful for the Giants this year. That's 10 players in so far. Now we're gonna look at the wide receiver position. I have us keeping Darius Slayton, Sterling Shepard, Golden Tate, Corey Coleman, 
David Seals the fourth and Johnny Hall. So David Seals, he's been standing out. This position could really go to anybody and it's gonna be cut really close. I do think that some of our receivers right now are gonna go on the practice squad and just the way things go, they'll probably get snaps this year. Corey Coleman, he could be a surprise cut, but he's been looking good and he was looking good the last time he was playing in the actual season. And Johnny Holton, we just picked him up. He's a guy who was a, a dominant gunner and we needed somebody to replace Cody Core. So bring him in. Cody Core is out. Darius Slayton, I expect about three weeks in to be our dominant number one receiver, point blank period. He might even start out as that because Joe just said everyone was coming in with a clean slate. Sterling Shepard is gonna be a guy who can move around. Golden Tate can move around, but they're sort of similar, except Golden Tate is a little more shifty after the catch. Shepard, I would say, is better at getting open in general. All three of these guys attack the football. So those are your top three guys. And Corey Coleman, I see as a guy who can play anywhere too. So I expect this wide receiver core to be a lot better this year if they can stay healthy and if they cannot get suspended, which I see is pretty likely because now if one of these top three guys go out, Corey Coleman, I don't think will be that much of a drop off if someone like Golden Tate gets injured to play that same role. Those are your wide receivers for the Giants for 2020. Next, I wanted to break down the offensive line. We can start with the offensive tackles. Now we have so much versatility. I'm gonna keep three paper offensive tackles. That's gonna be Andrew Thomas, Cam Fleming, and Matt Perry. Of course, you have other guys on the roster who have played tackle, who are experienced at tackle, and that's why I'm only keeping three. Andrew Thomas, first round draft pick, strong guy. He's been making highlight plays in the running game so far. We need a little bit more from him in the passing game. I'm not that sure about what went on that entire scrimmage yesterday, but hopefully he did better in that scrimmage yesterday. And if he can be a solid pass blocker, he's gonna be an immediate impact player. You have Cam Fleming, veteran, at the very least is gonna be solid. I don't think he'll be as bad as Nate Solder was as far as giving up all that pressure. And then you have Matt Pear, who maybe might not be the first guy off the bench, but he's your third on paper tackle because you have so many other guys who can play the position and maybe Matt Parrott has shown it up. When I saw him in that scrimmage, he looked good, he moved well. So I'm definitely excited to see him eventually get his chance. Maybe it's halfway through the season, but I think he'll be really good eventually. You look at the interior of the offensive line, you have Will Hernandez, Kevin Zeitler, Shane Lemieux is gonna make the roster, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Haycraft, the rookie who's moving from tackle to center this year, Spencer Pulley and John Jalapio. I'm expecting Jalapio to make the roster despite my video the last, I think two days ago, because they're saying that he's gonna play a little guard and center. So maybe he'll be better at that. And I think he won't even start. It's gonna be between Nick Gates and Spencer Pulley. I'm expecting Nick Gates to win this center spot. Kevin Zeitler will be your right guard. Will Hernandez will be your left guard. And the rest of these guys are deaf guys. Hopefully Shane Lemieux works his way up. Maybe he's a replacement for Kevin Zeitler. Everyone expected him to work as center, but pretty much as soon as they got the pads on, he's been playing strictly right guard. Spencer Pulley, not sure. Maybe he doesn't make the roster with the signing of Jalapeo because he's getting paid. And if he's not starting, he might just be a cut. But for now, I have him making the roster. He still is a dark horse to me to be that starting center. And then when you look at Haycraft, the rookie, he's a guy who at center was really athletic, was moving really well, and I think they want to hold on to him. For the D-line, I'll say that the Giants will keep Dexter Lawrence, Dalvin Tomlinson, Leonard Williams, B.J. Hill, and the big guy, Dalen Mack. I think Dalen Mack is going to be kept just for that goal line when you want to you know, put five D linemen on the field who are all big, he's that guy at like 340, 350 or something. And Dexter Lawrence is 340. And I think that those two will be out there pretty much every short yard of situation. Leonard Williams, of course, is our highest paid player in general. <laughs> so he's going to have to stay here. And then you're going to have people like BJ Hill rotating around, staying fresh. And Dalvin Thomason is really underrated. He's dominant. I expect our actual defensive line to be very dominant on a weekly basis. 
you have one person trying to block any of these people, it's it's fried taking, it's done, it's over. So for the pass rushing outside linebackers, I'm saying that we're going to keep four. Now, we might keep five if something else on the roster, someone else gets cut, we might keep five. But for now, I'm gonna say we keep four. Lorenzo Carter, Marcus Golden, Kyler Fackrell, O'Shane Zimenez. I think that those are gonna be your four outside linebackers. Maybe you keep someone like Carter Coughlin, who has looked good in the off season, but with how the rest of the roster is working out, I had us keeping four. Marcus Golden, Kyler Fackrell, two relentless pass rushers. They might not be the highest, you know, skill level as far as like 17, 18 sacks, but these guys, if they're your starters, I'm expecting both of them to get over seven to eight sacks. Lorenzo Carter flashed in that scrimmage last time. If he can step up and be dynamic, that changes the entire trajectory of the team. The same thing with O'Shane Zimenez, really athletic, a whole lot of potential, worked out with OC last year or this past off season. If any one of these two guys can break out, you can, you almost see like a flip they might be both of our starters. If not, that'd be a, a really, really good rotation because they can be a guy who can get over seven sacks as a starter and you flip them around, that's a whole lot of guys wreaking havoc and fresh pass rushers at the end of the game. For the inside guys I have is keeping Blake Martinez, Brian Connolly, Tay Crowder, Devontae Downs, and Cam Brown. Cam Brown has the connection to our defensive line coach, I'm pretty sure. He's a guy who's a really good special teamer, and that's why he's gonna make the roster. Devontae Downs has been running around, really explosive, covering, hitting. He's someone who's earned his spot on the roster. Just from the training camp and the scrimmages, Ryan Conley, we know why he's gonna make it. Showed, showed a lot of things last year. Blake Martinez, a veteran. He's gonna be the quarterback of the defense. Pass coverage, we're not sure. He's had seasons where he's been great. He's had seasons where he's been not so good. With Tate Crowder, he's gonna compete with Devontae Downs to be that third inside linebacker off the bench. So that's gonna be an interesting thing to see. They're both fast, athletic, hard hitting, high energy guys. And I think our entire inside linebacker room is gonna be like that, which is gonna be really exciting because we're gonna have a lot of guys running and hitting and they're gonna be protected by that dominant defensive line. So the cornerback position has been a mess this off season. We lost two guys who we thought were gonna be building blocks for the future. I don't think the Sam Bill is gonna be back and you guys know what, what's going on with the DeAndre Baker. Messed up situation, but you gotta adjust, you gotta move on. So I have us keeping six cornerbacks, James Bradbury, Logan Ryan, even though he's probably gonna playing more safety from what I've seen so far, but I have him listed as a corner for this list's sake. Darnay Holmes, Grant Haley, Corey Ballantyne, all of these guys besides Grant Haley can play inside and out. I've seen Haley try to play outside and hasn't really turned out well. And then for your last corner, it's gonna be Isaac Yadam, who actually has been getting looks as the corner opposite James Bradbury. So that's why Logan Ryan is probably gonna be playing more safety but you'll see him all over the field. Last but not least, guys, this is awful that we have to do this, but I saw a report that said, if not, you know, this is wrong. And the entire roster, as far as back end positions, someone else makes the roster that you guys are disappointed it didn't make my particular roster. But I saw a report that said, for the Giants to be able to reinstate Xavier McKinney uh, from that IR, he's going to have to be on the initial 53-man roster. So I'm pretty sure after the 53-man roster is final, we put McKinney on IR designated to return, and then someone who we cut, we can bring back. But the problem is, if you cut someone, he's a free agent, and you have to hope that no one else signs. So your four safeties are gonna be McKinney, Julian Love, who might have to move back to corner, and Logan Ryan might be moving to safety. And then you have Nate Abner. Starting off, it's gonna be three safeties, but we also have someone like Sean Chandler who maybe he's a guy that we keep because like I said, that McKinney spot will eventually come back open after the roster is set. Julian Love, he can play corner, he can play safety, 
saw him play free safety, saw him play strong safety. He was solid pretty much everywhere but corner. Corner to me was his weakest weakest position. Nate Abner, dominant special teamer. That's why he's on the roster. That's literally the only reason. Maybe you'll see him sometimes at safety because we're so thin right now. Maybe we sign Aha Clinton Dix. And then of course, Jabril Peppers is probably our best safety. Maybe Logan Ryan will have something to say about that. But for now, he's that guy who can play both safety spots. He's a playmaker. He can play in the box. He can play deep. And for special teams, Grant Gano is going to be your kicker. Riley Dixon will be your punter. And Casey Crater will handle the long snapping. And that's the whole 53-man roster. So that's your entire 53-man roster for 2020. Of course, there's no way to actually predict it because you don't know who else will get cut on other teams. For instance, HaHa ha Clinton Dix is going to be on the roster. So you don't know who's going to get cut. Anyone can get cut. I mean, a center on one team that's better than anybody we have can get cut. So of course, this isn't the final day one roster, but this is as close as I can get at this point. And also keep in mind, this isn't my roster as far as who I want to make the team. This is just who I think the team will keep from what I've seen. If it was my opinion, Jalapio wouldn't be on the roster. A lot of guys wouldn't be on the roster, but this is just who I think will stay. And let me know what you think. I'll set timestamps for everyone of the positions. That way you guys can go to each position, see what you liked, what you didn't. Go ahead and leave a comment. And if you're this far into the video, this is probably a little bit longer video. But if you're this far into it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Stiggy546, I'm out.